Hi everyone, it's Eleanor from Art with Eleanor and today I'm going to be showing you how I paint realistic fluffy clouds. But before we get into the video, if you could drop this video a like if you enjoy it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more art content like this. Right, let's get into the video. So I started this painting by finding my reference photo and then use this to transfer the outline to my sketchbook. The transfer method I used involved putting charcoal on the back of the reference image and then tracing over the main shapes and outlines of the cloud and its shadows so I didn't have to worry about the overall accuracy of the shapes. But if you want to sketch out the shape freehand, that's totally fine too. I then taped around the edges of the painting and started to fill in the sky. For this painting, I'm using acrylic paint, and in the end, the only colour I actually used was a dark blue acrylic paint, as well as white and black. When filling in the sky, I wanted to achieve a very subtle gradient from a darker blue at the top of the page to a lighter blue near the edges of the cloud. This involved going back and forth between the two colours of blue I had pre-mixed to create a mid-tone as they blended together in the middle of the sky. I also wanted to mention now that the sky that I leave throughout the majority of this video will get changed at the end to remove some of the rather more obvious brush stroke marks and make the sky have a smoother, more even colour. Of course, this is probably easier to do before you start on the clouds but it works both ways around and if you end up in the same situation as me, it doesn't particularly matter. To start on the clouds, I wanted to create more of an underpainting before I started to add in any of the details. So, to do this, I started with the darkest colour I could see, which was the blue shadows. Then I added in a lighter blue around those areas to soften the transition into the bright white of the main body of the clouds. Later on, you will see that I end up lightening the darkest blue I put down, but it is worth having this dark colour as an undertone, as it gives a lot more depth to the painting. Another advantage of doing an underpainting is that it allows you to be freer with your colours and painting style. If you get caught up on adding all the details to just one section at once, you may forget to think of the painting as a bigger picture which could lead to the painting looking less realistic. At this point, I started to work on my blending of the shadows into the brighter white of the clouds. I did this using a technique called wet in wet. This means, as my underpainting was still wet, I was able to use that to blend the two shades of blue into each other to give more of a smooth transition into the shadows. Whilst you're watching me do this, I also just wanted to stress the importance of looking at your reference photo regularly throughout the whole painting process. You should use the reference photo as a guide to check your colours are accurate, as well as it being helpful to see if you've got the details correct. I have to say this is one of the most important things for any artwork you are doing if you are going from a reference photo. Your eyes should be darting back and forth constantly reassuring yourself that your next brush stroke is going to add value to your piece. Of course, using acrylics means it is easy to rectify any mistakes that you might make, so don't worry if you do happen to make an error. Just wait for the paint to dry and then go back in with more acrylic paint to correct it. At points during this video, you will see I have slowed down the speed of the footage to show you how I am using my brush and the different strokes that can be achieved by just using one type of brush. As the acrylic I use is quite thick, taking advantage of different brush strokes can help to add texture and depth to the final painting. One brush stroke I used a lot throughout this whole painting is making tiny circular motions with the tip of my brush. As the clouds I had chosen to paint were what I would describe as fluffy or candy floss clouds. Using circular brush motion is really advantageous to give the illusion that the clouds are really soft and fluffy. A lot of this video involves blending the different shades of blue in the shadow, 
So whilst this speed painting is going on in the background, I just wanted to let you guys know that I have opened a shop on Etsy. So far I have only got a few items up on there, but my plan is to be selling more of my original artwork. My shop has the same name as my YouTube channel and Instagram, but I'll leave a link to it in the description below so you can follow my shop um, to have the opportunity on getting your hands on any of my original artwork. I also have circular watercolour commissions set up on my Etsy, so if there are any watercolour landscapes you have seen on my channel or reference photos you would like me to attempt, then be sure to check it out. Anyway, back to the artwork. At this point, I actually left this artwork overnight to continue working on it the next day. And as I came back to it, I decided the amount of blue in the piece was starting to make it look more like a wave than a cloud. So I checked back on my reference photo to see that there was a slight grey undertone to the shadows in the cloud. I started with a fairly dark grey to create the undertones that I was going to need in the final piece. You will see in the next part of the video me starting to use my finger to smudge the paint a bit more. This is a technique I use when I don't want to add any more paint to the paper, but I want to diffuse out the paint I've already got there. Obviously this is pretty messy and you need to make sure any remaining paint on your finger is dry before you try to use that same finger again. Using a dry paintbrush would have the same effect, but I couldn't find the paintbrush I wanted and I was too lazy to spend ages looking for it. The next step was to add in a lighter grey colour, which is light enough that it blended in well with the white of the clouds. I found adding this and blending it with the light blue colour helped to add a depth to the shadows, as well as tone down some of the areas of the cloud. In particular, the part of the cloud in the bottom middle section of the painting was too bright white compared to the reference image, so I was able to blend in this light grey colour to make it look more realistic. This part of the painting process did take a lot of small and subtle adjustments to make the cloud look more realistic. I also just wanted to add that the white of a cloud is never purely white for a large section, so just bear that in mind when you are adding in the details. Again, I would like to stress the importance of referring to your reference photo frequently, especially when adding in the details, as it can be easy to add details in which you think are there, but actually they're not present in the photo. Talking of reference photos, I've also been thinking about doing a longer, more in-depth video tutorial on how to paint realistically, with reference photos included so that you are able to follow along in more of a real-time way. So if any of you would be interested for me to do that, please do let me know in the comments below. I kept working back and forth with the light blue, white and grey acrylic paints to perfect the different shadows and make sure I have got all the details in that are needed to create a more realistic piece. To do this, I used more of a dabbing motion with my paintbrush, rather than a proper brush stroke. As I said earlier, this can help to add texture to the painting, something that beginners often miss, which can really elevate the quality of a piece of artwork. I also just wanted to say, the reason I'm painting a cloud is because one of my friends wanted to see me do this. So if any of you have something you want to see me do, so that you can improve your artwork, then please do let me know in the comments below or on my Instagram and I will try my best to do it for you. I then decided the background didn't look smooth enough so I went back in and added another layer of paint. For acrylics, adding layers of paint can really help to enhance the colours in a piece as well as make the paint look smoother which gives more of a professional finish to a painting because I had to go back in and change the background, this meant I also had to go over the tops of the clouds again to make the outline stand out more, as I accidentally covered it up with blue acrylic paint. If you end up in this situation too, make sure the outline matches to the reference photo, 
as it can really change the whole outcome for your painting. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and found some of the tips mentioned throughout this video helpful. If you did enjoy it, then I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like and subscribe to my channel as it really helps me grow my audience here on YouTube. There is also a link to my Instagram and Etsy in the description box below if you wanted to check either of them out. Thanks for watching!